There was a duke in far off western lands, grown old in war and known for cunning mind, who followed king to shifting Aiton sands to serve him there and see what he might find in battle held in rain and sun and wind. The armies met and clashed upon the field, and never was it thought that one could yield. Yvonne de Grey had known the Duke of old, and many years had sworn to see the day when he the Duke would capture and would hold the same for ransom which a king would pay. And to this end he'd constantly essay. But year on year the wily Duke stayed free by might or skill or clever strategy. As battle drew towards end neath setting sun, the Duke and King and other stalwart men withdrew within a keep they would not run, without were foes for each not less than ten. They looked to sell their lives full dearly then, and Ivan saw a chance to make his play when doors were broken down at end of day. Ivan, his son, and men did press around, stood close beside the door, the duke therein, with Polak's keen, prepared to hold his ground against all odds, face lit with battle grin. The doors are broke and all the troops flow in, and Ivan's men intent press past the fight to seek, to seize upon the duke, both left and right. They hold him fast and for surrender call. One has a dagger held in his waistband, the duke espies and grasps for it with all and pulls. The pommel comes off in his hand. Now weaponless, he heeds Ivan's command, surrenders and receives his noble due, good treatment and a rich, refreshing brew. Right, of course, fly all over the place until you want to actually go to the next part. The battle done, Ivan has causes us press, that ransom from the king is his by right. The king to Ivan sagely does confess the duke is old, no longer full of might, but Ivan does not know the king's delight in counsel of the duke of battle words, worth more to him than full a dozen swords. In feigning loath, the king does bargain well, Ivan gets some small coins, who supplies, nor fortune made. But when he comes to tell the duke what he has won, and in what wise, the duke doth pledge to add to Ivan's prize, with wealth and crafts produced by his own hands of his free will, and not Ivan's demands. He gives fine brew for all of Ivan's men, and beads of finest glass to grace the fair high ladies of the house. His bard speaks then to praise the same in verse, as they stand there. Now one more treasure doth the duke declare, a gift to which no other can lay claim this poet to advance good luck in this poem. And this is the poem given to the ladies of House Black Rose. The ladies of the Black Rose glow with inner light of beauty rare. Twas love that wrought her changes there, not simple nature made them so. Who greet their lords with glances low, love makes the fairest yet more fair. The ladies of the black rose glow with inner light of beauty rare. Her grace Kathleen has taught them so. They match their lords who battle there and catch again with charm and care the prisoner brought by battle low. The ladies of the black rose glow with inner light. That is a rondeau in the form of the model of Charles d'Orléans, who made many of them full stick prisoner. Where the sales get the uh, the Ah, okay.